push this. See how that rattles? But when I lift up on this, it just pulls it right back down. It's not dancing around. All right, today I'm going to make a video about this 2014 GMC terrain. So it has the 2.4 liter uh, motor. I believe this is a V4. Now the problem that this car is having when the engine is running, there's a lot of pressure behind the oil cap. In fact, if we start the car, which we'll do that in a moment here, and unscrew this oil cap, this will actually rattle around and you can actually see the pressure coming out uh, from the oil fill cap and that's no good. We don't want that. And I believe that what, what that means is that we have a clogged PCV uh, orifice. Now I believe this pipe is part of the PCV valve system and I already have cleaned this out. As we take this apart, I'll show you what I cleaned out and how I cleaned it out. But there's actually an orifice in the intake manifold down here that I believe we're gonna need to get to and take a pick and just try and clean that out. And I think that should solve our problem. So you wanna go ahead and start the car? Take a look at this cap as I push this. See how that rattles around like that? So there's a lot of pressure in there. See a little bit of smoke. Yeah, that's no good. That's no good. So we're going to try and fix that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this car inside and we're going to start taking this car. All right, so the first thing we need to do is take off our air box. So we're going to start by removing this PCV vent and just carefully wiggle this around and this pulls right out like so. Next thing we need to do, remove this hose clamp right here. So take an eight millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver and unscrew this hose clamp. Once that hose clamp is loosened, you can disconnect that clamp. So next we need to remove this hose clamp off the throttle body. So again, take your eight millimeter or flathead screwdriver, loosen up this connection. So next, what needs to happen is you just need to grab onto your airbox and lift up. Pull, pull, good. And now reach in the back, take your two hands in the back, and twist it sideways and try and pull towards you kind of hard. Perfect, now take that up and out. Where did I put it? Oh, 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 we're dripping. Oh, no, oh, you're making it worse. What do I do? Tell me what to do. We're gonna have to get some sawdust now, but let's put that on the table for now. That's one of the things we're gonna try and correct today. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is protect the throttle body. So I'm gonna take an old glove I have laying around and just stretch it over the throttle body just to make sure we don't get any debris inside the throttle body. Next thing we need to do is take the engine cover off. So this vent hose, we're just gonna carefully twist this off to the side for a moment, unscrew the oil fill cap, tap that, and then we're gonna lift up on this cover, pull forward, like upward at a 45 degree angle from corner to corner and there are kind of like plastic, or no, excuse me, uh, rubber boots on the bottom of this that lock into these pins right here. So you may have to get just a little bit aggressive to get this up and out. And then we're gonna replace the oil fill cap. Make sure we don't get any debris inside the engine. All right, now I'm gonna take some compressed air and I'm just gonna blow out any loose debris I see here, especially where the intake manifold bolts to the block up here. Just try and get some of this loose crud off. So the first thing I wanna talk about is this vent pipe right here. So I already cleaned this about a week ago and it did not solve my problem. So in order to clean out this tube, get yourself a pair of pliers and carefully twist this rubber boot back and forward while pulling this boot towards the front of the car. You can pull this rubber boot right off like so. Then from here, I just took some throttle body cleaner and sprayed the inside of this line out, which I'm confident that that line is fine. But also what you can do, what I like to have in my toolbox are like some dental picks, and I find myself using these more and more. But simply go inside this cavity right here and just very carefully kind of scrape around in here. And if you've never done this before, you are gonna find some black crud in here. As you can see, it's, it's pretty clean, but when I went to clean this out, about a week ago, I was pulling a lot of crud out of there. So that's just how you clean that little port right there. All right, next we need to start removing some of these electrical connections out of the way. So we're gonna start with this connector. So first thing you do, push this red tab back very carefully. Helps to take a little pick, push in the center while you slide this back. Next thing you need to do, take two hands on this electrical connector, push down on this little black push tab that you can now push down on. Wiggle this back and forth, and that slides off. 
we need to remove this connector right here. So in order to remove this connector, there is a kind of tannish, whitish uh, connector. You need to push towards the windshield like so. See how that pushes forward? And just wiggle this forward. We're gonna carefully move this line out of the way. To remove this connector, push down on the black tab right here. Maybe two hands. Work the connector side to side, and it will pop out. More connectors we get out of the way now. The more room we're gonna have later, so first thing we're gonna start by sliding that red backup safety tab off, and then take your finger and push down on the black push connector that you can't really see. Simply slide the connector off. Now we can start taking this harness and kind of getting it out of our way here. And this connector for the fuel pump, again, I don't know if we need to take this off, but I'd like to make more room. So see that red tab right there? Simply take your pick, slide it forward. If you take your pick and come around on the underside, a little black push tab you're going to push up on, that connector slides right out. Next, I'm going to take a body clip removal tool and I'll remove this Christmas tree clip off. This, uh, this shield. Next we need to remove this 10 millimeter bolt which holds on this electrical connector. Alright, we're also going to pop this Christmas tree clip off that holds the wiring harness to this kind of protective shield for the fuel pump. Like so. And next what we need to do, we need to remove two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here and one right here, and this is for the shield for the fuel pump. All right, also down along this shield, there is actually a plastic retaining clip. Take your body clip removal tool and carefully try and get this clip out of here. It's gonna give you some problems. Next, we're gonna remove this Christmas tree clip right here. Next, remove the 10 millimeter nut down here on this stud. All right, so now we can go ahead and take this shield out and um. it'll slide right out. I'm also gonna remove this kind of papery material very carefully just so we can get a better look at what's going on under here. This will slide forward. Ta da! So, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully take this paperish shield and I'm going to carefully bring it forward so we can access the bolts behind here. Now, it probably would be easier if you want to take off this fuel line right here. I'm going to try to avoid doing that. So. Alright, so I do want to blow this off again before I start uh, removing these bolts or studs. So what I'm going to do before I blow this off again, because we have this hole open, I'm going to take some tape and just tape up this hole. There's also another hole right here that I'm going to tape up to make sure we don't get any debris in there. Put some safety glasses on and then we'll blow this out again. Alright, so next I'm going to remove all these bolts and nuts. So bolt one, stud two, bolt three bolt four, stud five, bolt six, and then stud nut seven. Gotcha. So now we're gonna take our intake manifold and we're simply gonna slide this forward. So, we have the intake manifold pulled forward, but I can't really see what's going on inside that cavity. Now, the only way to allow enough space for you to really take this intake uh, manifold off is to remove this fuel line. And this is a low pressure, this is the low pressure side of the fuel line, right? Like it comes from your tank and then it goes down to this pump, which I believe this is a high pressure uh, fuel pump, and then it sends the fuel down into the engine. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to take off this fuel line right here. So there was this uh, connector in place. So in order to remove this, simply pull this connector off like so. Or well, this is more like a retention clip. Slide it forward and that comes off like that. 
Then you're going to need a tool like this, and this is to remove uh, fuel lines like this. Uh, I had these because this is what I used to remove the old fuel filter in my 2005 Ford F-150. So you just pick the one that close, closely matches uh, the, the size fuel connection that you're trying to remove. So we're going to slide this down in here. Uh, I'm going to try the other side to see if it's a better fit. I'm liking that. That's a real good fit. So what we're going to do, we're going to slide this forward, push this fuel connector. Slide, oh, slide down. Okay. It's going to make a little bit of a mess, but now we have enough room to uh, pull this manifold off and we did not cause any damage. <laughs> so I still don't have enough room to really pull the manifold forward, so I'm actually going to remove this stud on the right side and I used a 532nd socket and we'll see if we can remove this stud. And now we should be able to pull this forward enough so we can get a good look and see what's going on behind here. We, we have a little bit more room. Not, not really as much as I was hoping. I guess we could pull this line off, but then we'd have a bunch of antifreeze everywhere. Alright, so if you take a look at your intake manifold, where the top bolt would go, what you're going to want to do is course pull your intake manifold off the block as far as you can you see I'm just using a, a wooden wedge to try and show you what's going on back here but you'll notice that there's a little little uh gasket back there right a little green gasket so take your right hand pick and reach down in there with one finger and what you're going to do you're going to try and find like a little hole in the middle of this small gasket right here and once you find that hole you're going to want to take your right hand pick kind of force it in there with one hand and then take the other hand and work it back and forth. And let me tell you, that hole was completely clogged on this car. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the other camera. I've got my phone going right now. I'd really like to try and sneak my phone down in there and uh, show you what's going on a bit better, but my phone uh, cannot reach down in there. It's about the best shot I can give you, but uh, just keep playing around with that pick until you find that hole, work it back and forth. Uh, I'm gonna do this a bit further then I'm gonna try and get some uh, carburetor cleaner or uh, in throttle body cleaner and just try and shoot it in that hole if I can and try and get that cleaned out a little bit better. So I have a can of carburetor cleaner right here. Now there's no way for me to get this little straw down tucked into that little hole in the manifold. So what I'm going to attempt to do, I have some o 3 welding wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it into the straw. I don't know if this is going to work or not. So the purpose of this wire is just to keep it open. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a torch, apply a little bit of heat to this. Just try and soften, soften it up a little bit. I'm going to try and bend this like so. And that welding wire should keep it open. It's had a second of cure, so now I'm going to try and pull this welding wire out. And that, that seems to have worked. So let me put this back in the sprayer right here and we'll see if we can get this to spray on an angle. That actually worked out pretty darn well. So now we can take this, sneak it into that little hole in the intake and we'll try and spray it out. Okay. All right, I got that little hole cleaned out the best that I could. I sprayed it out with carburetor cleaner uh, I used my pick. I just did everything I possibly could do. I'm pretty confident that it's going to alleviate our problem. Then again, we'll have to put it all back together and keep our fingers crossed and hope that this fixed our problem. So now we need to put everything back together. And that's going to start with realigning that intake manifold and putting that stud back in. A uh, quick tip, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, whenever I take something apart, especially automotive-wise, I always like to lay everything out on a piece of cardboard, and I take a black sharpie and I just kind of identify where each fastener went to. 
So this fastener goes to the electrical clip that's 10 mil. These are for the fuel pump shield. And these are my studs and stud bolts, or well, stud bolts and stud nuts, and this is the order that I took them off. So I'm gonna put them exactly on the way that they came off. All right, so now we need to properly torque down all these nuts and bolts. So we're gonna torque these down to, I believe, 89 inch pounds, which I don't have an inch pound torque wrench, which I did the calculation that that equates to about between seven and eight foot pounds. So approximately a one foot bar right here. So I'm gonna estimate what about seven or eight pounds is. Now the order that you torque these down is critical. So first we're gonna start in the center, upper center, one, uh, inner lower right two inner lower left three upper right four upper left five lower bottom right six and lower bottom left number seven so let's torque these down All right, so just fired the car up, brought it outside, ripped it up a couple times, and it's 95% better. See, before, that cap was literally blowing, blowing right up and dancing around, but now when I lift it up, it sucks itself back down. There's a little bit of suction as there should be. And I imagine this will get a little bit better with time as it warms up and maybe gets a little bit more of the schmutz uh, that was clogged up in that orifice. But when I lift up on this, it just pulls it right back down. It's not dancing around. So I call this as good as it's gonna get. I'd say it's definitely 95% better. So thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful and I'll catch you on the next one.